If it goes right, it's a slice. If it goes left, it's a hook. If it goes straight, it's a miracle. This is Out of Bounds. If it's happening in the world of golf, we're talking about it. Coverage, debate, discussion, pro golf and local golf. Let's do it. This is Out of Bounds. And here are your hosts, Nate Sharman and Josh Derso. All right, welcome back to the Out of Bounds podcast. Josh Derso and Nate Sharman here keeping you in bounds. The latest from around the golf world. It is Masters week. Big week, Nate. Uh, the one we... One of the ones we most look forward to all year. Are you ready for the uh, the the green weekend? Oh, I am ready. I've I've been looking at some Masters clips from you know from years past and, and watching some coverage here from Monday morning. We we saw the big cat Tiger Woods out at the range. Um, I didn't watch too much of it, but just just knowing he's there and knowing he's swinging, seeing some swings from him are, are amazing, Josh. But it's this time of year, and and we got the Masters, and I, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah, he he, uh, he played practice round yesterday, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from what it sounded like, he, he looked okay. Um, we're going to talk more about that later for sure. Um, but first, we have to get through uh, this past weekend, which coming into Sunday morning looked like was going to be an absolutely dreadful day for the PGA Tour um, because you had uh, Ash K. Batia with a, a, a significant lead and turn around, and we've got a tie on the 72nd hole. And we got playoff golf. How long? Yeah, pre- yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Denny McCarthy chases down Ash K. Patia. Um, Denny McCarthy finishes with seven birdies in a row, Josh. Uh, it's insane. The, Ash K. just kind of thinks maybe you are, maybe even the common golfer, like you said, thinks he can kind of, you know, kind of not put the, not put the pedal to the men, not have to do that and just kind of cruise to the victory and get in the Masters next week and everyone's excited about it, right? Denny McCarthy says, oh no. He hoops a few putts. He, he knocks, he chips one in. He, he does whatever he can, scratches his call and scratching and calling his way back into that one to force a playoff, makes seven straight birdies and then dunks one in the water on 18 and actually gets the win. I mean, he didn't play bad. Like that's the thing. Batia didn't play bad. He played well. I think he shot like what, 66 or 67. In final yeah, round. I think right around there. Yep. So like he, he played well. It's not like he played poorly. I mean, Denny just lit it up and, yep. you know, it was, it was one of the more, miraculous things to see um you know everything worked perfectly until it all fell apart on that approach shot which you know i saw i saw a couple different arguments on on twitter which was one was he was due for that shot right he was due for one of those uh, and then the other was that you know he hadn't really hadn't really had a, a true pressure shot up to that point, despite the fact that he had made so many birdies in a row. It was almost like he was playing with house money as he right. was coming down the stretch. So, um, you know, he doesn't get that win. Uh, and the question now is, is you know, we look at these two players moving forward. First things first, how significant is this for, for Batia? I mean, this feels like what could be the start of a, of a good run for him. Right, yeah. It's the second PGA Tour when he did win last year. He won the Barracuda, I believe. That's an opposite field event, so he wasn't, you know, he wasn't in the Masters or anything like that. Yeah. And then he wins the Valero, gets in the Masters, and it really can jumpstart your career, Josh, the 22-year-old lefty. It's 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 just so cool, this tournament, I think. You know, not being an elevated event, so there's not as many eyes on it probably, right? You know, they don't have some of the big players in it. But the chance for it being right behind the Masters to, to play your best golf, get that victory, and then keep it rolling right into Augusta, right? So you, you know Ash K is going to be doing that, dealing with a little bit of a, a little bit of shoulder problems after you know celebrating on the seventy second hole when he made that putt. But um, I think he'll still play well. He's going to have that adrenaline and that that um, he's he's mentioned he's played like six or seven weeks in a row, I think. So um, he's going to have that adrenaline coming into Augusta. Um, going to have to try to rein that in and play his best golf on uh, Thursday and Friday. But just a really cool atmosphere in Texas every year, uh, right before the Masters. Yeah, I, I think one of the most underrated uh, things that any of these guys get for for winning one of these non elevated events is is access to elevated events for two years after that. I mean, that's right. huge. You want to talk about having access to all the elevated events through twenty six? That's that's serious. Um, I think I want to say he wins one more this year. I don't know that it's going to be a, a huge headline event, but I could see him getting one more win, um, and and I think that would be an incredibly a uh, successful campaign for a guy who has come a long way in just a couple short years. Right. It'd be incredibly successful. He's able to find another win. Do you think he makes a cut this week at, the, at Augusta? 
I think he makes the cut, but I don't think he's going to, he's not going to contend. Uh, yeah. I one thing at the masters is a lot of them make the cut, you know, the, you know, 50 and ties with a 90 player field. Yeah. I mean, it's so, and plus the other thing too is, is like, you know, you mentioned he's played how many weeks in a row now for like five or six weeks in a row. I think he's played, he had played six weeks in a row. I think he mentioned um, with yeah. uh, Smiley and that happy hour. I mean, so then you've got a win and now you've got a major, he's got to prepare. He's going to be gassed. Like, right. I'm not sure what realistically anybody watching his game could think that he has left in the tank. Also, um, we don't know what condition that shoulder's in. Um, right. Obviously, he's not going to sit it out. You don't sit out the Masters after you qualify the way he did. I mean, he but, partially dislocated his shoulder and then he pumped the drive and then hit a good second shot before he got treatment. So, yeah. um, and there's just so much adrenaline going, right? Um, especially for a 22 year old guy, he can really, he can make the turnaround, I would think. Yeah. What'd you make of um, him getting treatment in the middle of the hole? I know you, you know, we were exchanging some texts. I don't think you were too happy with, with the so, pause. <laughs> I just thought it was weird. I don't, I've never seen a player get uh, treatment like that in the middle of a hole. We've saw Scotty, Scotty Scheffler get treatment not too long ago, but that seemed like it was more in between holes. And this was right after Denny kind of dunked one in the water too. So I would, would guess, I would wonder if he would get treatment if Denny hits a good shot or a bad shot, if that was always the plan, I mean, I would like to think that that was probably the case, but it's interesting to think about too. And then it's almost like he kind of iced himself. I mean, he hit a great shot after, but it's almost like he kind of iced himself and made himself think about that shot a little bit more. But that makes it, that goes to show that these, these pro golfers, they don't think like we do. They don't think about the shot or, or, you know, NFL kickers are like that too. They have, they have no, no thought about that so that they don't, they're not doing that. Like we think they might be, but, um, Pretty cool stuff from Ashke. Ended up not really mattering. I mean, Denny made a mess of that of that playoff hole. So, I mean, there's not really a lot of discourse about it. But I would like to see if, you know, if Denny hits a, does hit a good shot, they both make birdie, what happens. Um, but I don't I don't love it. But I, I guess if you have to do it, you have to do it. I just think it's weird that he hit two golf shots already on that hole and then he asked for treatment. I think that's a little yeah, strange. I, I agree. I think the, the thing that stands out to me is uh, – as he's as they're walking down the fairway, um, he had already signaled to the the official there that mm-hmm. he was he wanted to get treatment. He wanted to talk to his trainer. Um, obviously, he watches he watches Denny hit that abysmal shot on the first playoff hole. That third shot coming into the green, you would have thought that maybe in that uh, at that point he might say, "Ah, don't worry about it. Let's just play this thing through." But at the right. same time, I feel like these guys are so. Uh, wired to follow the game plan right that like he had already put himself in the mindset of i'm going to do this and then i'm going to do this that i think you know especially had that uh, for some freak reason had he not and he done the same thing denny had done and all of a sudden we're talking about another playoff hole um you don't know how that shoulder would have handled if it wasn't taped up so you know one of those one of those things um for sure it certainly made for interesting tv coming down the stretch there yep for sure um Denny McCarthy doesn't get that first win. How soon do you think he gets it? He's had some close calls, but this was definitely, I think, the closest call. Yeah, um, he was also in a playoff against Victor Hovland last year at the Memorial. Yeah. But um, I, I don't, there's, you can't say, it's hard to say that he's not going to win a PGA Tour event. I mean, this guy's just too good, too good of a putter, too good of a wedge player to not continue to contend and to win, eventually win a PGA Tour event. I don't think this really sets him back too much but it does pour a little bit more salt in the wind for, for a guy like Danny McCarthy. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of these guys look at this as like, this is another example of me having it and me being able to do it. I know a lot of people from the outside, especially us amateur golfers would look at it and be like, Oh, that's so crushing. You lose right. again. You get so close, but that's not how these guys look at it. That's not how they, they, that's not how this right. plays out for them at all. Especially um, with McCarthy too. It's not like he was in the lead. He fired seven right. straight birdies, you know, it's, so it's, it's a little bit different in that regard. I would say it's all. Yeah. I mean, and to that point, like it's easy to look at, at the Valero for him, his Valero and be like, I, I shouldn't have even been there. Like the fact that right. I'd gotten close was kind of a miracle in and of itself. Kind of proves that he can do it. Right. Like you said, it proves that he's, you know, he's, yeah. he's able to play with these guys and he's, he's, he's going to win the one. I, I would say he's, he's too good not to, like I said. I, I I would even go as far as I think he wins another one. I think he wins this year. I, I really do. This I has been be shocked if he plays well at Augusta this week as a first timer. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. Could happen. That good of a putter. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about some uh, news that broke. I think right before the Valero. Right. That was when that broke. Uh, yeah. Sometime during JT. the Valero, maybe. Yeah. So uh, JT has dropped bones. 
um, his caddy, longtime caddy for the last few years. Um, is this, what do you make of, of this news? I don't put too much stock into it. Um, they've only been a couple of years since 2021. Justin won the yep. PGA championship, um, the, the following or the, that, that year or 2022. And then he played and played well in the Ryder cup and, you know, he's in a president's cup in there too. But, um, I don't really think too much of it is it, it's definitely not a bad split, right? They, they talk really, they both have talked really good about each other. It's just kind of a more professional split. But I do think, Josh, it's a little bit weird, the timing. Right before the Masters, right as we get into the more stretch run of the season, right, we start playing majors and, and start playing some big events. I think that's a little bit weird. Um, I think if you're a guy like Justin Thomas, maybe you would like to do it more in the off season. But if it's time for a change, it's time for a change, right? Yeah, I I, I guess I, I'm curious about what the story is behind the story with this, right? Because... On one hand, yeah, you're absolutely right. I it's it's a giant nothing burger this story because at the end of the day, what are we all focused on? We're all focused on how JT is playing, and you know, for the last, um, he's shown some progress this season, I think, but yeah, he's, he's still a long, well. he's still a long way from from where we expect JT to be. Um, you know, especially with what he had been over, you know, between 2014 and, and 2018, 2019. Um, you know, I, I think this might be the first of several changes that we see. And a lot of the other changes may happen behind the scenes and they may be smaller changes, but I think JT is going through a bit of a, a um, uh, rehab, I guess, of, of his game, uh, taking accountability of, of what has happened or not happened for him over the last, um, couple of years. Yeah. Obviously you, you have said every time we talk about JT, you mentioned how well he played, um, in the Ryder cup. And, you know, I just think at the end of the day, that's not really what motivates these guys. Yeah. And for JT and his legacy, um, he needs to win golf tournaments. He needs to win golf tournaments. And frankly, he needs to win majors uh, right. because that's what people expect of him. He is, he is one of, you know, that generation's five best golfers. So, you know, that, that's kind of where I, I see it. I guess I'd like to see how he plays this weekend. Because that's yeah, a pretty big change to make that close to the Masters, like you said. And I like what you said about taking more ownership, too. I think it was, it was in the fall, right, where there was, there was those stories came out about his dad kind of being a little bit more, you know, involved in the swing, right, and, and kind of moving around his coaches a little bit behind the scenes. And yeah. I think that's interesting, too, because I think it really boils down to what you said, just taking ownership of that golf swing. And it being my camp and my people that go through this together, and, and we're going to fail together, and we're going to win together. So I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, speaking of the Masters, uh, lots of stuff coming up. Nate, uh, you are going to have a, a full uh, roster picked out here, um, like you do for all of the majors uh, and most other tournaments for that matter. Uh, yeah. What are, what are like you that. watching? Um, I, what, do you want to get right into our, our, our winner picks here? You know, I don't have my full betting card figured out yet. I'll, I'll probably have that, you know, either the, later today or probably tomorrow, Wednesday, the day before the tournament. You know, as tea times start to come out, too, and we kind of start to learn a little bit more information. Um, but, yeah, the Masters is here. It's 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 just such a fun event, you know, just looking, you know, just glued to Twitter I mean, almost every day and looking through some of the interviews that are happening today and, and some of the different stuff that's going on. There's, you know, as the Masters does almost every year, Josh, they did make one change that I that I saw. Uh, Pink Dog with the, number, number, the second hole moved back 10 yards. That's a popular birdie hole for these guys, and I think that really will remain, you know, that, that dog like par five. Uh, on the second hole, but Josh, I think we should start with, you know, just picking one guy and, and who we think is going to win the event. And um, I think John Rahm's going to win his second green jacket. I, I do think that um, he's played not super well on the live tour, but not bad. You know, he's, he's kind of made his, his marks there, but I'm going with Rombo to repeat at, over here at Augusta this weekend. That would be historically, <laughs> excuse me. That would be historically monumental. If he yeah. pulled that off monumental, I don't see why he would. I don't see why he couldn't. Uh, that that guy named Scotty Scheffler, though, is a little bit of a problem. Yeah, and that is where my money is um, this weekend because despite the the uh, shoddy putting that we saw out of Scotty a couple weeks ago, I think that was mostly attributed to him just having played several weeks in a row and and not having a, a little bit of time off. Um, I think we're going to see the putter come back 
And, you know, I think that's dangerous for, for everybody, whether you play on live or whether you play on the PGA tour, if you're in Augusta and Scotty's putting well, watch out. Yeah. And the greens tend to be a little bit faster at Augusta. I know they're, they're talking about that. The golf course could play a little hard and fast. We'll see how much rain we get on Thursday. But, um, I, I think that can kind of benefit a putter like Scotty Scheffler, right? You know, a little bit of a faster greens can kind of take out a little bit of the guesswork in terms of speed, right? So then you're only focused on getting the ball online, right? So I think for a guy like Scotty Scheffler, who's historically putted very well at Augusta, you know, being a winner of the event, I think this is a good spot for him at this stage in kind of his putting trajectory, right? He's gone up and down and up and down. So I would I would like that pick a lot, Josh, and I think he'll putt well this week. Scotty feels now like, to me, a more refined and complete version of Jordan Spieth when Jordan Spieth was – putting lights out. Remember that stretch when, when oh, Jordan yeah. couldn't miss anything. Um, when Scotty's putter gets rolling, he's unstoppable. And that is to me, the thing that just makes him an overwhelming favorite coming into this. Um, despite the stacked field, despite having to play against guys that, you know, Scotty hasn't played against Rom or, or Neiman in a while. And, you know, that could potentially have some effect on things, I guess, but you know, at the end of the day, I think Scotty's the most complete golfer on the planet. So just, you know. Oh, by far. And and the odds show that too, right? I think he's the only guy in the, in the below 10 to 1 to win this event. I think he's coming in right around 6 to 1. So the odd makers know that, right? And I think the odds are in a good spot. I think you have Rory and Ron right around that 10 or 11 to 1 number. Um, and I, I think it's for a good reason because that Scotty, Scheffler, that Scotty Scheffler ball striking is always there, whether the putter's there or not. He's going to... He's going to hit the ball down the middle and he's going to find a lot of greens and he's going to give himself a lot of chances to make birdie. Yeah. Uh, just a, a quick note on that. Um, DraftKings right now has him at four and a half to one. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. I mean, he's, he's that, he's that much ahead of the field. Um, you know, I, who else are you watching outside of Rom? You know, to me, I think we saw good things out of Rory this past weekend. His game looked good. He, he seemed mentally like he was in a good spot. Um, and then, of course, uh, Ludwig, I think he is, I don't want to call him a sleeper because I think he's like, he's in the top 10 in terms of, of betting odds right now. Um, but he feels like one because he hasn't, he hasn't played in a major before. Right. And we know that first timers at Augusta don't usually pan out that well in terms of winning. I think you have yep. to look back. I think it's 1979, the last time a first-time player has won at Augusta. But a guy like Ludwig Aberg, he has that star potential. I mean, oh, yeah. we, we've seen him play so well, and he kind of has that stature right, of being, you know, I've, I've been here before, even though I really haven't. So I think a guy, I think a guy like Ludwig Aberg will play well this week. I'm also looking at like a guy like Hideki Matsuyama, who's lit the world on fire this year. You know, he has that win, right, at uh, Riviera, and then he's, he's played well but since that, too, and he's won here before, so he knows this track pretty well. So I expect a guy like Hideki Matsuyama to play well. I like Figala. I think Figala's played pretty well this year. And it seems like I have a game that fits the Masters. And another guy another guy that a lot of people love this week is Will Salatoris. And, and I think that's a, a, for good reason. He's historically played very well at the Masters um, in his tenure, too. All the reports out of his camp is that the backfield's great, that there's no limitations there. So um, I, I think a guy like Will Salatoris, that's going to be a very popular pick this week. But I think it's for good reason. Interesting. My hesitation with picking him would always be is, is still putting. Yeah. I just, I haven't seen enough out of the, the putter from him since the injury to feel confident in that broomstick. And I have one other sleeper I'm looking at too. There's a, it's a guy that I feel like nobody has really talked about much at all. And that's a guy like Matt Fitzpatrick. He's a guy that I've really kind of put in some DK lineups this year. And I've been, you know, kind of excited around him and he's played pretty well too. He's not played outstanding, but he's a guy that's played well, and it's a guy that's won a major before. He knows what it's like to be in these big pressure situations and a guy that can kind of be in the moment too a little bit as well. So I think a guy like Matt Fitzpatrick could play well this week too. Yeah, um, my sleeper is Corey Connors. Um, it's a name that nobody's really going to think of. He, his, he's sitting right now at like plus 6,500 on DraftKings uh, if you're looking for that outright pick. Um, you know, if you look at his strokes gained stats this year, um, he's playing really well from tee to green and he's a guy who, who putts well too. And I think could, um, could be a sleeper. Uh, I think it might be worth putting a couple bucks on him cause you never know. You never, ever, ever know. Yeah. Just gotta um, be careful with the masters with those long shots. They really don't seem to win. I don't have the statistics right in front of me, but it seems like 
the winner of the Masters come from the front of the pack. The only one, only one I can think of off the top of my head is 2016 and, and Danny Willett when uh, Jordan Spieth went, had a tough time on number 12 and, and Danny ended up getting the victory. I don't have the number that he was at, but that, you know, that's upwards of 10 years ago at this point now. Um, I don't, I know on deck, he was kind of a little bit further down the board, but he's still, you know, in that top maybe 50 to one category, right. That you kind of look at, it seems like a lot of these masters victories come from the top of those of the odds. Yeah, and by the way, speaking of guys that are at the top of the odds but played terrible last week, Brooks Kepka feels like a sleeper pick right now, but God knows he isn't because um, what he does in non-majors or over there in live is just completely irrelevant. He could show up this weekend and win by 12, and absolutely nobody would be surprised. Right. It's I I think I said it last year after the PGA, if they give me Brooks Kepka 20-1, to 1, I'm going to take it every single time and in a major. In, in a major at Augusta where he hasn't won one, of course, but he's played very well. I mean, last year he had a lead, right, and, and had some falters down the end. In that 2019 Tiger year, he was right up there with the uh, right up there with uh, with Tiger to try, try to finish first there. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see Brooks Kepka uh, dying the green jacket on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, never can tell. Um, let's talk Live a little bit. Who has the best week from Live at the Masters this weekend? Obviously, you're picking Rom to win, so I guess that answers that question. Yeah, the, the, the simple answer is John Rom, right? But I think the most impactful is is Hoking Neiman. If we see Hoking Neiman come out here and contend and, and be in the top, you know, 10, 20 or whatever, and have his name on the front page of the leaderboard, that really uh, solidifies what his game is like and, and what the live game is like. If he comes out and shoots 75 on Thursday and misses the cut by a couple strokes over the weekend, and that, that also validates the PGA Tour players, PGA Tour um, truthers to kind of say, well, live is a joke and a lot of the guys that play on it don't are, are kind of not that good of players. So I think Hoki Neiman has a really big spot this weekend to kind of really wear the live tour cape on his back, so to speak. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of funny because I, I had those two players as well. Um, you know, I kind of give it to Neiman, though, the lead of that a little bit just because, you know, it's so hard to repeat at a major. And I think that just, you know, that'll make it harder for Rom to to come out and, and do it. But hey, if I think it's a win for Liv either way, if either of those guys say finish top five, top 10, or, you know, if they find a way to win, um, if Rom wins, it creates this interesting scenario that I was thinking about when I was driving down, um, driving around this morning. Um, you know, if he wins and so far we haven't really seen a lot out of him over in Liv, right? Does he kind of get saddled with that, that Brooks Kapka, that the thing that people saddle him with, the hey, he doesn't care about anything other than majors because he hasn't even really looked like a guy who wants to dominate over on live so right. far. Granted, he's only played in a few events, but if he comes out and wins the Masters and we, we look at the way he's played so far, you know, in live events, I feel like there's a weird, a weird balance there where people are going to have something to say about that because it just – it wouldn't track like he doesn't look like he's at, at the top of his game. He's around, he's contending a little bit, but he hasn't like pushed to win over there. It seemed like to me with John Rahm is that that first live event that they played, he had that sort of, I'm going to win this golf tournament. He had had that. Well, we've seen from him in the last few events, you've seen a little bit less, you know, you still, he's a very intense guy. Doesn't, doesn't take anything for him to get pumped up, especially for the masters too. So I think it's going to say a lot about what Liv is kind of creating over there if John Rump does come and contend in this Masters. I think so. Yeah. Um, okay, so speaking of expectations, we have to talk about Tiger, of course. Um, we're going to hear from the Big Cat today in his press conference. But um, when we get to Thursday, when the golf ball hits the, the lush green earth, um, what are the expectations? Do we – you know, if I had to give you three three options – Cut, DNF, or top 20, which are you taking? Oh, man, um, I'm going to take somewhere in between. I think he does make the cut. I think there's no way there's no way really he misses the cut in my mind. Um, he's played in this event 24 times. He's missed the cut once, and that was as an amateur in 1996. Uh, besides that, as a pro, he just doesn't miss the cut of the Masters. I mean, he had a DNF, what that, what's that, a year ago, where he had to call out yeah. in the third. But um, I don't. I think he can make history this week. He gets the 24th straight. He breaks that record held by Freddie Couples and another. And I think it's Byron Nelson. Who, I'm not sure who it is um, that holds that record of, of made cuts at the Masters. And so I don't think I don't think there's a chance that he that he misses the cut. Also, the weather is going to be relatively warm, Josh. Um, they're they're calling for a good amount of rain on Thursday. 
So that could play a factor too, but I think it's going to be relatively warm in Augusta. So that plays a really big hand in, in terms of Tiger with that, you know, kind of put together body that he has at this age. But I would kind of find him somewhere in that top 35. I, I, I think that's kind of where he, where he falls, but I do think he yep. makes the cut, yes. Top 20 feels out of the question. That feels, um, that's just hard, yeah, it's, yeah. I think I think he finishes, but I really do. I think he misses the cut. You know, I, I think when it comes down to it, he just – he doesn't have the reps. I, I don't yeah. think he's really I, – I think putting the expectation on that you make the cut in an event like this when you haven't played a lot of golf and your body is kind of up and down, I think that's a that's putting a lot of – that's putting really high expectations on somebody who shouldn't have high expectations. And the Masters cut is a little bit different too. You know, we only have 89 players and you're cutting top yeah. 15 ties and then you have some players that – don't routinely play, right? They're past champions that they are probably not going to make the cut. Um, yeah, yeah. You had Sandy Lyle for a bunch of years. He's not playing this year, but you know, you have some other players like that too. So making the cut at the masters, I wouldn't say it's, it's hard or I wouldn't say it's easy. I wouldn't say either one of those, but it's, it's definitely a little bit quote unquote easier than your, your, your stun of the mill, you know, PJ tour event that has a full field. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see for sure. Um, so let's uh, talk again about Scotty Scheffler. Brandel Shambly from Golf Channel says Scotty could win by eight if his putter is hot. Um, so the simple question is, we've talked about what we think about about Scotty. Given what we've seen this year, do we think the putter will be hot? What is it going to take, Josh, for us to stop saying the putter's hot for Scotty and him just to turn into a an average putter? What does he need to do in terms of that? I think... If he just, I think that that discourse can kind of change around Scotty Scheffler. It's so much fun for us to get up here and say, well, he's the best ball striker we've seen since Tiger Woods, but he can't pot, right? That's the, the, the fun, the fun thing we'd like to say. But if he does out, goes out there and even puts, I would say adequate and gives him a chance to, to put him, put himself in position on Sunday to win this tournament. I yeah. think we might be able to change our narrative on Scotty Scheffler. And, um, I don't always agree with Brandon Chambly, but it's hard not to. If he, if he ball strikes his way around the golf course like he has, then yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about a couple uh, players. Um, Patrick Cantley or Xander Schauffele, who needs to win more? Uh, Xander, in my mind, he's played very, he's played pretty well this year, you know, and doesn't have a win or anything like that, but he's played pretty well. Um, a lot of people are picking him this week. I've heard a lot of people talking about Xander Schauffele, not a lot of talk about Patrick Cantley. Um, so I think Xander just has some of those expectations. He needs to come out here and he needs to play well. Um, it's, he just hasn't been able to get over that hump, but, um, he, he, he's got the spot. He's got the chances right in his grasp. He needs to come out here and he needs to take it in my mind. So I, I'm going with Xander Schauffele. Yeah. I almost feel like because of where their games are, I think Patrick needs it more at the moment. Right. Um, just because Patrick's Patrick Cantley's game looks markedly different than it did last year. Um, if he played well this weekend, it would shut people like me up and, and we wouldn't be having this conversation, even if he didn't win. But the way Xander's playing, I look at the rest of the majors this whole year and I think he should be favored in all of them. He should at least be like top 10 odds in all of them, right? Um, yeah. Patrick, if he comes out and he plays really poorly, say he misses the cut or say, you know, he just doesn't even, he's not even in the in the conversation on Sunday, I think it, it hurts him more going forward through the rest of the year. Definitely. Especially with what we've talked about, Patrick Cantley kind of holding that seat on the PGA Tour, making some prime decisions. We saw this with Rory McIlroy, who struggled last year a lot doing this. So I think that plays a, a huge factor in this too. It's so hard. And I think this, this is really going to be the thing. I've said it a couple times to you, I think, off air. Um, I, I think – no matter what happens, if a deal between Liv and the PGA Tour is cemented uh, at some point in the next couple of years here, no matter what happens with Patrick Cantley, whether he wins a major or not, if he's still on the board throughout that process and he's instrumental in that process, the golf world will remember him fondly. They won't remember the slow play complaints. They won't remember yeah, the kind of sure. weird, weird quasi attitude that he brings with him when he's when he's, um, you know, playing. Um, none of that. They won't remember the hat or anything else like that. You know, it will be that he was one of the ones that pulled golf together again. And I think that will be, um, you know, that would be a great thing to hang your hat on if you're, you know, just thinking about legacy because there's no doubt 
with all the great finishes he's had and with all of the success he has had, despite not having quote unquote, the big one, the guy's made plenty of money. I mean, he is, he is oh, literally yeah. one of the uh, winningest uh, players active on tour, despite not having a big one. So, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things, but, Xander's playing great right now. I think he is he is a very good pick um to to just objectively out of the two of them who will play better this weekend. Right. Um and our last uh, player comp Justin Thomas or Jordan Spieth. Who needs a win more? Who I think they they definitely both do obviously. We we've, we've talked about Justin Thomas so far, but I, I think Jordan Spieth has a great opportunity this week. You know, he's, he started to play better golf and started to round a little bit more into form. He's played extremely well at Augusta, obviously. You know, he, he played really well that one year he won. And then in 2016, too, we, you know, if it wasn't for number 12, you know, coming in, he's going to win another green jacket probably. But I think he has a really great opportunity to kind of show that he, he hasn't gone anywhere and that he's still here. But uh, Justin has a great opportunity, too, as well. <clears throat> yeah, you know what? I, I think Justin Thomas needs it more because, it, it, you know, he has just, been in such a dark place playing wise over the last year, year and a half. Um, but you know, I, I, I lean into this thing where like both of these guys, they're not going anywhere. They're in their prime. Right. They're in their prime. They're not going anywhere. Um, and they're going to have opportunities to win plenty of them down the road. Um, JT needs it more though. Right now I didn't put it on the list, but I'm curious. Do you have any strong feelings on the, the Jordan Spieth situation last Saturday? where he, he hits into the grand stair, into the building to get relief after he had hit a bad shot. I saw a lot of criticism yeah. of that move on, uh, on Twitter or on X. Um, you know, people saying it's a little unscrupulous, um, manipulating the rules the way he did to get a free drop. Um, any thoughts there? Not a ton for me. We do know Jordan knows the rules very well. You know, he did that at the yeah. British Open, right, where he, where he was able to get that free drop from the grandstand. Um, I don't have a ton of thoughts on that, Josh. Do you have a lot more? Um, I, I just think knowing the rule book and, and, and using it to your advantage is big. We see guys do that week in and week out, though. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Like My thing is, is I'm just tired of seeing people complain about all of the ridiculous, stupid rules that exist in golf. Yeah. Like, he took advantage of a rule that exists. You know, like the, the, the existence of the rule is the thing that everybody is actually frustrated about. The guy who takes advantage of it doesn't deserve to be the 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 target of you know the assault so to speak on social media obviously jordan probably doesn't give two craps about what people say about right, it on social media um but it's just interesting because it's like think about how that scenario played out everybody saw the shot tracker because it was getting shared all over social media like he hit it all over timbuktu and he still had a chance to make par right like, it just it, you know that shouldn't be able to happen but it does because that's how ridiculous sometimes the rules of golf are. Right. So, uh, one other guy we haven't talked about it. I wanted, I just kind of thought about it. What do you think about Max Homa? That's a guy that, you know, people have really wanted him to play well and he, play well at majors. And he, and he has played a little bit better over the course of the last two years, better in, in quotations, right? He still hasn't, hasn't had that finish at the masters. Do you think he has it this year where, where he kind of kind of labels himself as one of these top players? He certainly is. Yeah, you know what? I was just looking up his age to see, and he's actually a year older than Patrick Cantlay, and right, yet we yeah. never put the kind of pressure on now Homa. or yeah. never pressure that he we bloomed a little later Patrick than Cantlay. he bloomed a little later. Max Homa did. Yeah, um, you know, I I think again, I, I put him in that same category with with Justin Thomas and and Jordan Spieth and and Xander and frankly Patrick too. Um, if they stay healthy, they've got plenty more years. They've got plenty more opportunities. I'd like to see Max win because I think in terms of um, uh, names that would just be great for for golf because of the oh, personality yeah. they bring. People, him being a Max was huge winner, in that regard, yeah. Him being a Masters winner would be incredible for golf. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Uh, when do you think you're going to have all of your uh, all your picks ironed out for our friends over on TikTok and uh, YouTube? Probably tomorrow will probably happen on Wednesday um, as we get closer and closer to the Masters. We're going to get tee times coming out. I think they come out around noon today on Tuesday. Um, yep. So we'll start to see who gets the better draw. It, it's going to be really interesting with the weather on Thursday. They're talking about it being some bad rain. And I, I got to look more into it on when that's going to come. So you might be looking at your some guys, whether it be you make the cut plays or whether it be these top 20 plays, 
that can come out early on Friday. Maybe maybe that late early draw is, is good because they come out Friday morning and the course is a little soft and they can, you know, fire number. So that that's going to be a really interesting thing to look at. I think you do need to look at the weather forecast and you do need to look at when these guys have tee times and, and kind of see where it is. Plus, Josh, if we do get this rain on Thursday, the golf course is going to play completely different than the way yeah, it played in the practice totally. rounds. And that's a big thing, too. So I think you need a little bit of experience in that way, in that way too, to kind of know how this golf course is going to going to feel rain, too. So I, I think there's so many factors when betting this Masters golf tournament that you need to look at. All right. More on social in the next few days. Uh, that will do it, though, for this edition of Out of Bounds. We will be back on Monday with a recap show from the Masters. Of course, follow us on TikTok and Instagram for more this week, and we will see you next time. You've been listening to Out of Bounds. If it's coverage, debate, or discussion of pro and local golf, we'll be talking about it. Be sure to visit the website. Find us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. See you next time on Out of Bounds.